Hey everyone, how you doing? Dan here. And today I am super excited to share this video with you. So the story behind this video began when I bought my DJI Mini 2 drone back in January. I was extremely excited. I pretty much ran to the local park to get a top down view of the lake. Now in my head, this is what I was expecting to capture. Ignore the funny shape of the lake, I know. <laughs> um, but in my head, this is something what I wanted to capture. Now bear in mind, the height of the camera at the moment is 551 meters and the legal height of the Mini 2 is 120. So immediately before even getting to the park, I should have realized what this wasn't the image I was gonna be getting. So as I got to the park and I sent the drone up, this is pretty much what I ended up with. Definitely not what I had in mind, but still a fairly cool kind of composition. I then sent my drone above the dead wintry uh, trees above the lake and again, Definitely not what I was looking at capturing. I wanted the entire lake, not just the trees. To capture the entire lake, I thought my best option would be to capture a 360 pano above the little island. But again, it wasn't the best day in the world and this definitely wasn't the shot I wanted. It wasn't until my last video, how to do a vertical HDR pano, where I realized there was another way of doing this. So let me show you the image I captured this morning using similar techniques to my last video. If you haven't seen that video, make sure to check it out. I'll put a link just up above. But let me show you the image I captured this morning and I am so happy with this. So this is what I wanted to capture off Google Earth, something like this. And this is what I managed to capture this morning. Now, how cool is that? So this image is pretty much 50 images stitched together and I want to show you how I captured it and how I put it together in post-production. But I think the best thing to do now is to have a look at my screen recording and my flight data from this morning to see how this image was taken. So let's have a quick look how to capture a photo of an entire lake with your DJI Mini 2 without going over 120 meters. It is possible, let's jump straight into it. So here is a speeded up version of my flight data from this morning. So you see here, I've got a straight line and I just flew the drone along this line and I captured probably about 10 images along this line. Then I just came across a little bit and continued to do a straight line, picking up all this data. I continued this process and anytime you see the drone stutter for a little bit, that's me capturing three images. This entire process took about 20 minutes this morning. So totally worth it. I did also go a little bit further too, so I could just capture all of the edges around the lake, but I'll come onto that in a little bit more detail in a second, but quite a nice pattern to capture this entire lake. And you can see here, pretty much the entire lake is captured. I think you can see from here going to the image how it was captured, but unfortunately at the last bit of this time-lapse, I ruined my pattern to bring the drone back home, which was very silly of me. So that's pretty much it for my flight data this morning. Let's get into the fine details of how to capture an image like this properly. I've also got a speeded up screen recording of what my drone could see this morning. Whilst this is playing, there's a couple of key points I want to go over to make sure you're getting the best out of your images like these. So let's have a look. So first of all, I flew straight to the edge of the lake and I made sure I had plenty of room on the outside of the lake. Now this was so I can crop into it later on. So for example, if I go to back to my image, I've got all of this data here. If I'd have just gone right around the lake edge, I wouldn't have been able to crop it as much. And to be fair, I had to crop this quite a lot. As you see here, I had to crop in on these edges, which brought the overall resolution down a little bit. So I was actually looking something like that. If I'd have gone straight around the edge, my crop would have maybe overlapped the lake at some point, which I definitely didn't want. So tip number one is just to make sure you've got enough data around the edges of your subject, just to make sure you can crop in and get enough details to actually stitch your images together. This is super important. So like tip number one, tip number two is to make sure you've got enough overlap. Now it's how I did this is I looked at something in the scene, maybe this little tree here or the edge of this tree or maybe the edge of this tree, just something quite defining in the scene. And I made sure what that was in two or three images. So let me show you. So in image number one, we've got this tree and we come forward and we've still got it up here. This is just to allow Photoshop to merge them images together. And this way it's got very clear points to help it do it as best as possible. And again, we move forward and it's still there. Now, when this bit's gonna be going out of frame, I'll be focusing on maybe this branch or this bit of tree here and making sure that that's in as many pictures as possible. Now, you might notice I'm in automatic exposure mode at the top right here. And I was intending for this to be a HDR image. Now, I did actually capture 150 images. It might have been a little bit more. Um, let me show you. So I've got them all organized here. So here are my overexposed images, all here. Then we've got the normal images. And finally, we've got the underexposed images. I did try to merge all of these together in Lightroom and it was just too much to handle. And same in Photoshop. So I just went with the uh, normal exposed images 
and Photoshop seem to do a really good job, but that's why it's taking three images at each location. I also had a circular polarizer on, so that's why there's not too much sky reflection in the water. Can't see too many clouds in there, which was, so it was actually this circular polarizer, the Freewell um, circular polarizer, and the one I used this morning had no ND on it. The reason I didn't have an ND this morning was I wanted to capture these images as quickly as possible because it took about 20 minutes to capture all of the data. If I was waiting for longer exposures on each image, I might have been waiting 25 minutes, even a little bit longer. I mentioned earlier, I wanted to capture as much data on the edges, but now we've moved into the middle and I've still got this data on the edge. So again, this is just to allow it to all stitch together and give as much detail as possible. And as I mentioned earlier on, because we're capturing so many images into one image, we're gonna end up with a super megapixel image at the end of this. It's gonna be very similar to Google Earth. So for example, we can zoom straight in like you can on Google Earth. But as I mentioned earlier, if you did this image by going super, super high up, you wouldn't have nowhere near as much zoom data. So this is definitely very beneficial. As you can see down here, I'm just under a 100 megapixel image, which is absolutely amazing. If the drone did go past 120 meters, we'd have had a 12 megapixel image with absolutely no zoom capability at all. So this is definitely one of the benefits of doing it this way. Going back to the video, you'll also notice that my lines are very straight or as straight as possible. This was to ensure that there was no weird rotations going on. And again, this was just to make the job a lot easier for Photoshop. So as I was saying, I was going through capturing probably 10 images on each straight line and then coming across again, just making sure there's so much data on the edges so we can crop in the more the better. You can't have too much data. As you can see, going back to my Photoshop file, where are we here? Um, I actually missed a little bit down here and I missed a bit up here as well. I maybe was rushing on that last line. So in, if I was doing this again, I'd just make sure to capture that extra bit of data and then I wouldn't have had to have cropped in past this black line here. I'd have been able to keep a little bit of extra data down in the bottom. But that's something I've learned going forward, which I hope you guys are gonna learn something new with this too. So that's pretty much how I captured this image. I flew the drone in straight lines, captured a few images on each line, making sure there was enough detail and overlap and also enough details on the edges to make sure I had enough data to crop when I got to Photoshop. But let's have a quick look at how to do the merge in Adobe Photoshop. And if you are liking this video or learning something new, it'd be absolutely amazing if you could like, comment and subscribe. We are getting very close to a thousand subscribers now. And when we get to 1000 subscribers, as promised earlier on, I will be doing a DJI Mini 2 accessory giveaway. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. It's gonna be happening very soon. But let's have a look at how to merge these images together in Adobe Photoshop. Now you can do this on a Mac, you can do it on a PC, you can do it on Linux, and there's also different softwares to be using. Maybe we can have a look at that in a different video in the future, but let's have a look in Photoshop for now. So first things first is we're going to go to file. We're gonna go drop down to automate and we're gonna do photo merge. Um, then this window very kindly pops up. So we're just gonna to browse to our files. So I already organized all of mine this morning. Let's add them all. You get these options here, but I find it best just to leave it on auto and we'll hit OK. And Photoshop's just gonna slowly start bringing in each image as a layer, and then it's gonna start aligning them and marrying them all together. So we'll just give it a couple of seconds to do this. Depending on the machine you're using and depending on how many images you took, um, the amount of time it takes to do this will vary massively. I'm on an M1 um, MacBook Pro, so it does do it quite quickly. As you can see, we've got the align here now. So hopefully that'll dash through that. As mentioned earlier, I didn't go with the HDR in the end because of um, the processing issues. But is what you could do is you could merge each exposure together. For example, our underexposed exposure, our normal exposure, and our overexposed exposure. And then we could do a HDR merge in Photoshop to put them free together. The reason I didn't do this was I didn't think it needed. There wasn't much blown out data and there wasn't many areas underexposed in the scene. But yeah, I was super happy with how the image came out. I was just so pleased because the light was changing quite a bit you'll notice during the video let me just show you um, a couple of times my exposure changes so here I'm on um, ISO 200 and at this point I'm at ISO 400 and I think it changes again towards the end Oh no, um, but my exposure did change a couple of times and I was worried what, that wasn't gonna stitch together very well in Photoshop, but Photoshop did an absolutely amazing job at sorting them little exposure issues out. So here we go, and this is a stitched image, what we've received, so absolutely amazing. Stitching's perfect, the only little bit what it didn't seem to get right fully was this little bit here, which is a bit of a shame because that's the only little bit I can see which it hasn't done a particularly great job, but 
considering it's got everything else right, I'm more than happy with that. But down here, that's something we can quickly fix with the clone stamp. So yeah, this is the final image. And it's what's really cool is when you start turning the layers off, it's almost like a jigsaw. So we've got this here, that, and it's just taking little bits from all of the different images and filling them in. It's done an absolutely amazing job. And the only thing left to do now is to really crop the image just to get rid of this empty space on the side. So I'll just go to the crop tool. Where are we? Um, let's, let's not do original, let's do, let's clear that. Just so we can get under here and keep as much data as possible. We'll go a little bit higher there. Come in just a tad, just to make sure we've not got any black on the edge. And finally, same here. Now this was something really new and I've not really seen it being done on YouTube before. So if this is the first time you have seen something like this, I would love it if you could share it around and maybe get some other people interested in doing something like this. And also if you do any images like this where you capture multiple images to capture a really big area, I would absolutely love to see them. And if you send them over to my Instagram, I will feature some of the best ones on there. I know the image isn't the best in the world, I know that, but I love the process and the technique behind this. How you can take 50 images of little bits and piece them all together to make a super wide image. I absolutely love it. But thank you again for watching guys. I honestly appreciate it. I can't wait to do more and more videos like this, especially ones like this, which I don't think have been done that often. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.